Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to learn what random forests are and how they work. Random forests. So this lecture has a prerequisite. You should know what decision trees are and how they work. Then you can come to random forest. So random forest uses something called bagging. So bagging is a technique in which you combine many different models. And how you do that? So let's say you have a data set and uh, we will be using the same example, the Titanic data set that we have. And it has a bunch of features and a target variable. So survived and it has a number of other features. So like age, um, P class, it has a uh, sex, and let's say it has some other features, F1, uh, I don't even remember the name of all the features. So F1, F2, something like this. Anyways, so uh, here is our Titanic data set. And the idea is to use these features to predict who survived or who is going to survive. So now uh, in the previous video in the previous video about uh, decision trees we used uh, these features to create uh, a tree like this that helps us uh, predict who survived who didn't survive right um, and we started with all these features and the full data set so if you're familiar uh, if with Kaggle, you see like most of the people, what people do is they train a bunch of different models on the data set and or subset of features and they, they combine them together to uh, achieve a better accuracy. And that's what bagging is actually doing. So when, when, when you're bagging, uh, let's, let's first see how many samples uh, this data set has. So let's say it has 1000 samples and it has one, two, three, four, five features. So five features and 1000 samples. So what you do is you create another data set which has uh, 1000 samples and five features and the same why target survived. Um, so now you you will think that we created a new data set with 1000 features and um, it's derived from this one. So this one also has 1000. This one also has 1000 samples. So is it the same data set? No, it's not the same data set. What we do is we pick one sample at random. So let's say we pick this sample and we add it here. Then we picked another sample at random and we added it here. So now we have two samples. Now for the third sample, we pick randomly again and we added two. And the fourth sample, let's say we picked the sample that we have already picked before. So this sample again and it is added again. So one sample can repeat itself multiple times and you create a new data set with that. So now what will happen is uh, you have some samples in this data set which are not used. So this sample is not used. This sample is not used. All right. These samples which are not used for making this new data set are known as out of bag samples. Out of bag samples. And we don't create just one data set like this. We create multiple data sets like this. So now you have a lot of out of bag samples from uh, for each of the data set that you have created from the original data set. So one thing that you, the thing that you have to remember is you select uh, samples one sample at a time and your sample, you can repeat the samples. So it's chosen randomly. Uh, that's why you have 1000 samples in the original data set and 1000 in each of them. So every, every, all these data sets have 1000 samples. 
now what bagging is uh, you train a model on this data set you train let's say model 1 model 2 model 3 model 4 model 5 and model 6 so i have trained six different models on these six different data sets which are basically the same data set but with different samples in it and then what i can do is my i can say i uh, my model my actual model is uh, m1 plus m2 plus mn divided by n so what's happening here if my model one uh, predicts if my model one for a new sample if it predicts um, class one i say okay this is class one or i mean it's going to be some kind of probability right so let's say this predicts 0 0.9 this predicts 0 0.6 plus whatever 0 0.25 uh, and you divide it by n the number of samples that you uh, the number of models that you have there's a number of uh, new subsample data sets that you have made and this technique is called bagging and this will reduce the error that you have uh, on one single model so if if uh, two people out of three are saying yes you choose yes it's also called max voting max voting and if you have a regression problem again you take the average the same way so you can take the vote. Uh, so if you have uh, like the targets here, one, one, zero. So you take max voting of all these, but uh, most of the time you have the probabilities. So you can take average of the probabilities and then you can just do greater than or equal to 0 0.5 to get the class. Okay, so this is bagging, but uh, now we have to learn what random forest is. So, uh, random forest uh, does the same thing. So the first step is to create these multiple subsampled data sets. And then things become very easy. We create multiple subsampled data sets. And now we create a decision tree inside each of them. So instead of the model, I have my model, which is my decision tree. So like this, let's say. So I created multiple decision trees. So now in when we studied about decision trees, uh, we know that we go through all these features, all the features that we have to choose our root node, right? But in random forest, you have a value K. Also, you can also call it max features. Uh, that's how it is in scikit-learn or you can just denote it by k. So now here I have I have five features, one, two, three, four, and five. If I have to build a decision tree, I'm going to evaluate each one of them to find out what the root node should be. But when we are talking about random forest, we are building one decision tree for each subsampled data set, which has all the features. So it has five features, let's say but you choose only k of them randomly to create the root node and as you progress you again choose k randomly so even if you have chosen some so, so let's say i have chosen um i chose three features here age p class and sex okay so i chose age p class and sex and here i start my root node root node with sex and here, if I want to expand this, I again uh, have to choose from the same set of features. So same set of features. And I can choose again a K number of them. So I start with three features, uh, randomly three. And again, I randomly choose three features. So you can choose the sex feature again. Uh, in our case, uh, we won't be doing that uh, because um, it, it also depends on the feature. So if it's a numerical feature, you can choose again and you can keep splitting till uh, you reach uh, true or false or some value that you want to predict. So you built this decision tree by choosing K features uh, at random for each node. K 
k features at random for each node k features at random for each node and when you did that you in the end you take the max voting from all these trees and uh, all these trees vote to give you an answer like either a class if it's a classification problem either a class or a value if it's a regression problem so for value you can just take average so all of them are giving you probabilities you're just taking average of the probabilities and that's your class or you can do max voting so it totally uh, depends on you what you want to do mostly for class we can we do max voting so we take the max vote from uh, all, all the candidates that we have and here you can build as many trees as you want so but for each each uh, subsample data set that we created so let's say for this one we left out a few samples which we didn't use for this one we left out a few samples that we didn't use so if my model uh, here here my model is trained only on a certain number of samples certain number of unique samples right so here I have 1000 samples here I have 1000 samples but let's say uh, the model here is trained only on 800 um, unique samples. So you you have 200 samples on which uh, which it didn't use to train. And as I mentioned before, those are called out of bag samples. And what we can do is we can use this decision tree to uh, classify our out of bag samples. We can also use this decision tree to classify some of the points uh, from this subsample if they are not used to build this decision tree so you have a lot of out of bag samples and you have a lot of decision trees uh, which uh, were trained on some of those out of bag samples and not trained on many of them so you use the decision tree which was not trained on out of bag samples from any of these subsample data set and you can uh, use it to generate predictions so when you have generated predictions, you take a majority voting again for each out of bag sample for each of the tree uh, that was not used to uh, that, that didn't use the out of bag sample. And then you take max voting. And when you take max voting, you are actually predicting a value for a sample that was not used to train um, some of the trees. So when you do that, you are actually predicting uh, how good your random forest model is and the error on the out of bag samples is called uber error out of bag error so in machine learning what we usually do is we have a data set and we divide this data set into some uh, training samples and some validation samples so these are our validation samples now here with random forests it's already dividing your data into training and validation samples uh, when whenever it's creating this subsampled data set so you don't need to do that and these validation samples inside random forest are known as out of bag samples but you just have to take care whether like if uh, let's say i have these three samples and i have this model here uh, and these three sam this model was not trained on these three samples so we can calculate the out of bag estimate but here this model let's say uh, used uh, these two samples to train itself but it didn't use this one so we use only this sample and it since it's a new subsample data set it can have a new sub a new out of bag sample so that's that's the uh, something that you have to remember that's it and uh, yeah this is random forest in very simple words random forest is nothing but an ensemble of decision trees so you have many decision trees which are trained on subset of features on subsample data set and in the end they vote together to give you the answer so combining models always performs much better than one single model and that's the whole panda and uh, this uh, technique is also known as bagging and you can do bagging with uh, any kind of model so if you, even if you have a logistic regression model you can try bagging with that
not a problem. Um, so instead of building decision trees, you will be uh, training logic regression model. Simple. And that's it. That's random forest for you. Quite simple and easy. I hope you understood. And if you didn't understand how these decision trees are built, take a look at uh, the previous video. So uh, the number of parameters here you that you have is the number of estimators, which is the number of decision trees to be built. So number of subsample data sets, um, data sets, and the other parameter that you have is k, the number of features to choose to train each decision tree inside each subsample and the number of features, uh, this is the number of features for each node in a decision tree in each subsample data set. Okay, uh, and k is usually square root of uh, n, where n is the number of features. So the idea is to try different values of uh, k and see what fits perfectly for your data set, but usually square root of n works. So that's it. That's random forest. And uh, thank you for joining me. And if you like the video, do click like, do subscribe and do share it with your friends. Thank you. Bye.